I want to point out, for those of you who are looking at ESPN, uh, I'd like to point out Hannah Storm in a <laughs> horrifying, horrifying uh, outfit today. Um, she's got on a red go-go boots and a Catholic school plaid skirt way too short for somebody in her 40s or maybe early 50s by now. And uh, she's got on her typically very, very tight shirt, so she looks like she's got sausage casing <laughs> wrapped around her upper body. I, I mean, you know, honestly, I know she's very good, and I know I'm not supposed to be critical of ESPN people, like point out that, you know, people who say that they lost 50 or 60 pounds have actually gained all the weight back. You know, some. And, yeah, I mean, I'm not supposed to do anything like that, so I won't, but... Uh, <laughs> Hannah Storm today. Put the I mean, weight back, 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 back on. <laughs> Hannah Storm, right, Liz? It, Hannah Storm, it, it's come on painful. now. And you hit the highlights, Stop. the red go-go boots, <laughs> what are you doing? the Catholic school. The yeah, it's a little more Burber- Burberry than Catholic school, but still It's still a Lolita-esque quality, a yeah. pl- you know, appealing Trashy. to the fantasy of the little, little, uh, well, I don't, let's stop there. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's not what I would look. call a Holden Caulfield fantasy at that point. <laughs> Liz Clark is here. Gary Braun is here. I, I wanted to... Sadly, the spirit of the show has to change just a little bit for a little while. Tweaking it. Let me tell you a story. Yesterday, tell me a story, Uncle Tony. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Yesterday, I got to PTI and genius producer Eric Rideholm mentioned to me, he said, boy, you're making the blogs lately. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the blogs are uh, quoting what you've said on radio. I said, oh, yeah? What? He said, well, they quoted what you said about Hannah Storm. And I said, oh, what did I say? And then he told me what I said, and I remembered saying it. I said it on Tuesday. I believe that Liz was here on Tuesday, uh, and I made fun of something that Hannah Storm was wearing. And I said, ooh, um, what's going to happen? And he said, well, it'll be all around the country and the world in a matter of a second and a half. <laughs> and I said, what should I do? And Eric said, well, I don't know what you should do. And I said, you know what I should probably do? I should probably try and get Hannah Storm's number and call her and apologize. And he said, uh, yeah, that's it's not such a bad idea. So I spent uh, the afternoon after PTI was done uh, doing that. Um, I called ESPN and got a PR guy, Josh Krulowitz, and I said, this is Kornheiser. I've made a fool of myself again, not the first time, not the last time. And he says, yeah, I saw it. Um, I said, well, if you've seen it, they've all seen it, right? He goes, yeah, pretty much they've all seen it. I said, okay, can you get me Hannah Storm's number? And I said, I I went on in in my own self-justifying way to Josh Krulowitz, and I said to him, what I have said, and I believe I have said this every single time I have mentioned Hannah Storm's clothing, or Hannah Storm, I believe I've said the following things. I've never met her, don't know her at all. I think she's really good, and I think she's really pretty. I think I've said all of those things Every single time Part and parcel. I've talked about yeah, Hannah Storm. I think you're right. And I've also destroyed her clothing here and there. Uh, I've done that. As mm-hmm. I do with Hoda Kotb, as I do with, um, you know, if, if, if Bob Costas wears a ridiculous tie, if somebody, some guy's wearing a stupid outfit, if uh, Herm Edwards wears these idiotic Argyle socks to make a statement about his relative position in, you know, in, in the pecking order. This is what you do. Herman Edwards, I know. And this is what I do. Against our I am, urgings, I might add, but it's sure. what you do nonetheless. I am a sarcastic, subversive guy. And by the way, no one should take anything I say about them seriously in terms of their clothing because I'm a troll. Look at me. I have no right to insult what anybody looks like, what anybody wears. I mean, that I think should go without saying. But those of you who listen to the show regularly know that to be true. So I got uh, Hannah Storm's number, and I called her, um, and I had been informed, by the way, just before I called her, that she was aware of what I had said, which made it easier, actually, on a lot of levels. I didn't have to tell her what I had said. I said, Hannah, this Tony Kornheiser, I know we've never met, and these are bad circumstances to have this first meeting, but everything I'm quoted as saying, I in fact said, and I apologize unequivocally. I'm not going to tell you I'm sorry for the way you took it, because you took it the way you should have taken it, and I was wrong. And this is sort of what I do, and, um, and I'm sorry for it. I don't think I detected anything in her voice to make me indicate, to indicate to me, rather, that we would be going out on a cruise anytime soon. She won't be coming to dinner Friday? No, I mean, but I don't, no, I don't think so. And we'll talk about that later, too, where we've made a decision on where and how we're going to go to dinner. Um, but, but she was cordial. 
I said to her, uh, you know, and in, in trying to spin this as best as I could, not only did I say that I was a dope and do this all the time and mention Hoda Kotb and why she wears these, as she's wearing today, these idiotic dresses in the middle of the winter bearing her arms. You never learn, do you? No, hardly. <laughs> And I mentioned what uh, James Carville had taught me long ago, immediately say you're sorry, say it's not the first time, won't be the last time, but I'm apologizing for this time. And uh, I went on and on to say how much I liked her father. Now, I've said this before on the air. Her father's name is Mike Storen, um, and he was uh, a commissioner at one point of the old American Basketball Association when I was a very young reporter at Newsday and at the New York Times. He could not have been nicer to me, more cooperative, and I remembered him fondly. I found out... He was uh, retired and, uh, and coaching kids' basketball, actually, which I thought was very nice. And I tried to make another salvo into, Hannah, would you like me? I'm not ter- that terrible a person. And I said, you know, I've, I probably should tell you that I played golf with your husband. I was seeking to make points in that. And he, she said to me, everybody has played golf with my husband. <laughs> Her husband is Dan Hicks, who does the golf on NBC, who's a really nice guy. Jimmy Roberts and I played with him, and he couldn't have been nicer. And I knew I would like Hannah Storm. I, I knew I would like her because I've liked her on TV, but I could hardly lie and say that I didn't say what I said or that I hadn't said these same sorts of things before because that's pretty much what I do. So we got we got to the point where she said to me, you know, maybe you should take this, and this was her scolding of me, a fine and deserved from her point of view, absolutely deserved uh, to do this. And maybe, you know, you, you have a presence, you have a lot of places where you speak, you have a following, and maybe you should take this as food for thought. And uh, and I said, yes, I probably should, which is leading up to all the things I'm going to say in a second. But I'll get through with the Hannah Storm conversation. Um, and she started to laugh and make a couple of jokes, which was good. And she said, you know, I probably have to get rid of those boots now. I said, really? She said, you know, I probably should auction those boots off for charity. And I said, well, I've got an idea. And she said, what's that? And I said, why don't you send the boots down to PTI? And Wilbon and I will put them on the set. And we will explain why we have them on the set. And you will hear me say out loud, well, by the next time I say something stupid, put these boots in my mouth so that I don't have to say anything again. And we sort of left it like that. And then, of course, uh, I reviewed. And I, I asked her permission, could I say on the air that I had um, apologized? And she said, sure, that would, be, that would be fine. And I'm sure the people at ESPN will like that, too. Um, so you're not supposed to criticize your colleagues. And she's a colleague, whether I know her or not. Like I look at Mike Tirico and Tom Rinaldi on TV right now, and I know I'm not supposed to criticize them. So I won't. But I also, you know, I criticize everybody. My God, I, I had Chuck Bell should be fired. Yeah. And uh, Kimberly Suiters should be fired. Harry Jaffe should simply die in the street. <laughs> uh, Paul Farry, you know, all these. You know, so I've done this. Well, it's a day for apologies. I've done yeah. this. You, you know, well, I'm you... not apologizing to them. Well, you know. I'm not. But I've, I've, I've done this, and, and rather, and I, what I don't want, and I, I thought about this. Why do you do this, Tony? Why do you do this? I and mean, let's not, I don't have to get into the real sort of deeply psychological things about insecurity, because everybody's insecure. So, I mean, please, don't tell me you're insecure. Don't tell me you're depressed. You know, as Jeannie would say, you can throw a cat and land on 20,000 people that are insecure and depressed. Everybody is insecure and depressed. Stop it. Now, why do I do this? Because I used to listen, before I ever really got into radio, I used to listen to Don Imus, and it must have seeped in. And, and by the way, uh, whatever I've said about Hannah Storm or any of these other people, and I always take care to say that Hannah Storm is very good. I mean, yes, I criticized her clothing a couple of times. I've done that. Uh, and again, I'm a troll, so pay no attention to that. But whatever I've said about anybody, it is nothing to what Imus has said about me. That's not even close. He tortured me for years. Even when he had me on his show, he would torture me while I was on the show. And I sort of absorbed the notion because I thought thought his show was very good, very edgy before there was such a term as edgy, over the line often, if not all the time. Right, Gary, much like this show? Very much. Um, And I absorbed it. And I must have thought subconsciously this is the way to do a radio show. And by, by the way, I'm not bl- – don't say, oh, he blamed Don Imus. I'm actually crediting Don Imus for giving me sort of the model to do a radio show, though I never went as far as he did. You, know what, you knew what entertained you. And yeah. You figured that was what you would but try even, to deliver. even before Don Imus and the whole radio genre – You were still a prick. You're writing. <laughs> you always attacked people when you wrote like – Barry yes. Manilow. Yes. Come on. That's who I am, for God's sake. It has nothing to do with Don Imus. No. It's just you're well, just a sort of mean-spirited – Cranky guy. 
I'm an so old curmudgeon, are. and I was a young curmudgeon, and now I'm an old curmudgeon. But but it's sort of funny here and there. Yeah. Let's be fair. Yeah, I agree. Sort of funny here and there. And I don't really mean most of it. And it's my, you know what? It's my turn in the box today. It's my turn. What do bloggers exist to do? See, I could rant and rave now um, like do Buzz Bissinger me. about bloggers. I'm not even going to do that because if I was 25 years old, I'd be a blogger. Bloggers live to agitate. That's their job. That's their job. I say these things on the public airwaves. How can I say? How can you put it out there? I put it out there. I understand that. So, But the thing about bloggers is that one, one says, the, Kornheiser said this, and then 20 guys go, Kornheiser said this, and then they say, ooh, what's ESPN going to do about this? They agitate. They put you through the spin cycle of the washing machine. So There's they call no up context. They though. call up ESPN. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to and, and and it mm. leads to further and further debate. So I you know I get that. Um, do I like it? No. Do I understand it? Do I accept it? Sure. All of those things. You know, I mean what I'm saying today is really minor because nobody will care about it. They're going to care about what Tiger Woods says in less than an hour. But uh, but I thought that maybe I, I I'm, I'm never going to be kind and gentle. But maybe I should not call for everybody's head to be on a stick. You know, maybe I should. Should I reach out to Chuck? I can't Chuck Bell. Uh, should I reach out? Why in God's name would we reach out Chuck to Chuck apologized. Right, he apologized. Yes. As Kevin yeah. told us yesterday. Yeah. Well, I have a, a Maybe very, I should be less the, explosive. He saw the air in his ways. Maybe I should be less explosive. Do you want to kill this show? No, I like okay. the show. All right. I really so, like the show. But I have a very serious question. But I was, I was wrong. I mean, look, I, I have no regrets at... Uh, at all, I did. You, I had to apologize to Hannah Storm. Yes. Whether they wanted me to or not, no, no, you're no, fine no, no. with having wrong. said it. You're fine with That's having right. apologized. Yes. You're fine. Okay. What? what? What size are those red boots? Oh, would you like them? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's. You know, I've never met her. I don't. I have no idea how tall she. I've. I've no idea. I have no I would idea. wear those red boots. Would Actually, you? I liked her outfit that day. Well, you weren't here. Because you could have stopped me. Catholic schoolgirl, and the skirt right. kind of was right. My Blessed thing. Saturday. Yeah. It was a yeah. visitation. Yeah. yeah. So, sure. but ever. anyway. So anyway, but I, I don't know. I would, I would like to tell you that Hannah and I are okay. I, I doubt it. I, she's probably, oh, she and her husband you and won't her be family. Picking out China anytime no, soon, I mean, I think they probably uh, think I'm a low it's red fine. guy. You it's know, a, perhaps yeah. a pajama gram or a Vermont teddy bear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Something like that, a pajama gram. <laughs> yes, I'm sure that would be good. Wow. No, so so that's that is the story. So I that's why the show's going to suck today. <laughs> yeah. Probably yeah. about All three months. Are now in the tank. <laughs> yeah. It's just awful. And I don't. I, I mean, I don't. I have nothing. What are you going to do about that? Yeah, you know, someday I'll write a book. Uh, there, there are books that are written that include allegedly my words or comments about me by other or your people. actions, and that's fine. For that matter. Yeah, right. and that's fine. These, these... Someday I will write a book, and in that book. I will lay waste to a variety of people who I cannot touch now. I will. But I also want to say that, you know, if, it, if this upsets the people at ESPN, I understand that. And ESPN, for all the criticism that I lash out at ESPN here and there, my God, they gave me this incredible opportunity and this great television show, and they pay me damn well. So I'm not an idiot. And they put up with you. And they do, and they put up with me, and I think that they probably know that there's some risk involved in me being a dope on the air, because I was a dope on the air for them until they got sick of me. <laughs> you know, and now they're waiting for others to get sick of me. And that's the great cycle of life. You go out there, you light a match to yourself, you blow up in some incandescent flame, and then, you know, a little while later, you're on the side of the road and you're charred and you're done. Ha! <laughs> Here comes Tony's mailbag, got your email factors and your notes. And apologies. Here comes Tony's mailbag, gotta read some for all you folks. Thank you, Gary. We're from Mark Frennan in Chicago's Friday in Chicago, Friday show in a nutshell. Tony's sorry, Tiger's sorry, zebras can't focus. <laughs> from Jeff Pickett in West Des Moines, I only caught a few minutes of Tiger's speech. Did he happen to thank Joseph A. Bank for the really nice jacket he was wearing? Mike from Burke, Virginia. Tiger's apology to everyone who held still long enough versus Mr. Tony's apology to Hannah Storm wouldn't have been great if Tiger had said, hey, I'm a clown, I'm a yodeler, this is what I do. <laughs> Tony Verna, Jersey yodeler. City. 
Mr. Tony, here's a list of other things Tiger is sorry for. Saying how good this radio show is. Not being on PTI often enough. Handing President Bush that report on weapons of mass destruction. Leaking information on a private conversation with David Letterman. Not going to Window Nation for his new home remodeling. Not reading Junior's new book. How about the economy? Neil in Rockville. Though he was only on for a few moments while the camera panned the gallery of his friends, I would swear I saw Al Pacino <laughs> drinking down some body sweat and chomping down on a bust nut bar. <laughs> Douglas Kime in the District of Columbia, let me be the first to congratulate you, Anthony, on the new tone of your program. I will endeavor to pen my future missives in kind. Heed not those who predict a degradation of your program's quality. The high road basks in sunlight. Let the uncouth denizens of uncivilized discourse wallow alone in their lowly morass. I look forward to your future exchanges with the esteemed Mr. Feinstein. That's what our show is going to be from now on. Tony Vernon again. Mr. Tony, does anyone do more than put up with you? The continuum of loving Mr. Tony seems to come in the following descriptions. Pure hatred, hatred, tolerance, putting up with Mr. Tony. <laughs> Some of these are great, and they're just too long, and yeah. I've run out of time. So on Monday, on Monday, I will get back to all Don't you want to apologize for not getting to them? No, I, my headset <laughs> just fell out. If you're mm. out on your bike tonight, everybody... And all weekend long, do wear one. We're sorry. Don't f- roll! Shabbos, <laughs> Shabbos!